Dimitri Navarro here of iConnectivity. I'm here to demonstrate Port Manager, the new iOS app that uh, runs on iPod Touch, iPhone, and iPad uh, that is used to control the routing and filtering capabilities of the hardware device iConnect MIDI that we manufacture. iConnect MIDI is here. It's this little black box. And it accepts and sends MIDI data from uh, one of its 12 ports. Its ports consist of DIN MIDI connectors and USB connectors, both USB-A and the mini USB connectors. Uh, what we have here is a relatively complicated um, DIN MIDI and USB MIDI setup with synthesizers and controllers. Below the iConnect MIDI box is a uh, synthesizer module from Roland called the JV1010. That's it there with the um, with the LEDs on it. This over. Behind it is an iPad running Zuton's Music Studio app. And behind the iPod Touch are um, three controllers: uh, the Korg Nano Pad, the Korg Nano Key, and the Akai LPK25. And just out of the screen here is a Korg Triton Extreme, uh, which is a large synthesizer. And we've also got this connected into the system via its USB port, which uses a standard descriptor. And that, that way, it can be, um, it's easily recognized by the USB hub. The USB hub is just over here. Beside it is a mixer for the audio coming out of both the Roland JV1010 and the iPad um, running mu Music Studio. The, um, the Triton Extreme is already wired into the main system, which is going to the speakers. So what I'll demonstrate is uh, the, um, what Port Manager can actually do. Um, this controller here is, is, is configured to be transmitting on MIDI channel 10. And let me just determine which of the MIDI ports it's actually on. So I'm going to, there's a, a listing of all the input ports of the iConnect MIDI. There's 12 of them, including the two DIN ports in the back, which is called MIDI 1 in and MIDI 2 in, the two computer slash iOS ports in the front, which are mini USB connectors 1 and 2, um, the iPod is connected to one of them, and the iPad is connected to the other. And then the remaining eight connect, uh, ports are USB-A 1 through 8. And we can determine which of these um, devices, these controllers, are actually connected to a particular port. Uh, because USB re-enumerates the ports once the a hub gets powered up, um, we can never determine what... Uh, how how USB will actually do that. It's not deterministic. Uh, so that's not on USB A1. Not on 2. Not on 3. It's on 4. So what I've done there is selectively turned off and on the port to determine which of the actual USB port this controller is connected to. And we determined it was USB A4. I'll make a note of that on here so I don't forget. And we'll do the same thing with this controller, which is playing... Right now, these sounds are actually coming off of the iPod Touch, uh, off of uh, Music Studio. So that one's on 2, the port 2 of USB. This is probably on 4, 3. That's on three. And we'll infer that that's due to this is one now. Okay, so the Triton Extreme is on channel one. So you can see the iConnect uh, MIDI is actually lighting up as it transmits to all of those sounds. Now, every time I hit something, all the sounds are being, all the MIDI messages are being transmitted from this input controller to iConnect MIDI and then out to all the ports. But using Port Manager, 
we can selectively determine which of the output ports and inputs uh, MIDI messages are actually sent to. Not We can select to either all of them or we can select to only one of them or none of them if we wanted to. Now the um, iPod, the iPad running Zooten is uh, is on mini on mini USB. Uh, I think it's on I think it's on one, but let's let's figure that out here. So this is this is a um, input USB A two. This is here USB A two in. So we're going to look at that one. Now this this turned the page. It navigated to a second page, and it lists all of the um, output ports now, including uh, a, a line here for the input fil filters, and which we'll get to that in a sec. But here is listed all the output ports, and there's 12 of them um, for the input USB A2, which is what this controller is connected to. I'm going to determine which of these is actually the iPad, and I think it's, no, it's USB 2. So if I turn that off, now we're not getting any sound. That means the MIDI messages are going into the iConnect MIDI, but they're being blocked by iConnect MIDI from going out of the mini USB port number 2, which is what the iPad is connected to, and that's why we're not getting sound. I can turn it back on, notice the check mark is off, which means that that port has, that output port has been disabled. I'm going to turn it back on. Now we have the sound again. Off. On. Okay, and that's how we disable. We we can turn off the output of MIDI messages from this controller to output port uh, mini USB 2. We can do the same thing. If we go back to the previous screen, uh, pressing the button on the top left. That's the sound effects channel on channel 10 on uh, the iPad, and we know that that's on um, USB 4. So if I scroll this up to USB 4 and click on the disclosure button, and it goes to the second page, and we can determine here that if I wanted to turn off the sounds that are being played off of the iPad that are being triggered by um, this controller, I simply disable that line of USB or mini USB number two, which is the iPad. Disabled. Now no sound. Okay. And you can do that for anything. I'm going to um, turn on currently the sounds that are only being generated right now by the iPad. But I'm going to turn on sound on the um, the Roland JV1010 down here, right from the mixer. I'm going to turn it up, and we'll hear, as I press the, the drum pad controller, we'll hear different sounds now. There's a kick drum, snare drum. Now the reason why we're hearing all those different sounds, we still heard the sounds that are being generated by the iPad, but now they're also being layered by the sounds coming out of the Roland JV-1010, which is responding to, to the MIDI data coming from the controller, but it's playing a different sound set. And so we're layering those on top of each other. Now that's all well and good, but what if I only wanted the sounds from the JV-1010? Well, I can... Uh, let me just move this over so you can see the, if you can see the light down there. But there's data going into the JV-1010. If I wanted to selectively only trigger the JV-1010 sounds from this controller, I would simply turn off the mini USB number two, which is the iPad. And now, it's just the sound of the Roland JV-1010. Let's do it vice versa. If I wanted to, to uh, and by the way, the, the Roland JV-1010 is connected to one of these ports called uh, MIDI 1, and, and I know it's actually connected through this red, uh, this red um, uh, MIDI cable on the back of the iConnect MIDI, uh, and that's actually running into the MIDI N of the JV-1010, and I know that that's MIDI 1, so if I turn that off, no more sounds. No sounds from that. I can turn back that, and we're receiving MIDI data again. 
And if I turn that off, so no, there's there's none of the instruments are responding to those sounds. I can turn back the turn on the iPad again, and it starts receiving data. And I can turn both of them on. That's routing. That's the routing capability. I can do that with all of these controllers. Up to eight USB controllers can be controlled that way, as well as two more ports of MIDI DIN controllers, the round five pin connectors that are on the back. Those are also included in this, as well as any control that I have coming out of um, the screen of the iPad or an iPod Touch or a computer. So all the routing capabilities um, uh, all the routing configurations can all be done using uh, Port Manager.